Major underwriting for A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles was provided by the Baton Rouge Convention and Visitors Bureau. In Baton Rouge, our past is your present. Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. And People's Drug Stores, serving South Louisiana for generations. George and Shirley Piku are proud supporters of A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles. And by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation and Tourism. Where you have this architecture, history, music. And the bittersweet cry of the blues. Especially the blues. There you go. How about a dozen? Red beans and rice. We rolling, y'all. We're a nation of immigrants, a country with roots in other soils. Nowhere is that more true than in the country of Louisiana. I'm Chef John Falls, inviting you to tune in to A Taste of Louisiana and a new series dedicated to our food heritage. Louisianians are descendants of seven primary nations that have influenced every dish we cook today. Welcome to A Taste of Louisiana. <laughs> All right, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? Good to see you. Good to see y'all. All right, all right. I don't know what y'all did to get in this audience, but I tell you, shame on you. Uh, oh, what a show! What, what a show in this kitchen uh, uh, today, y'all, with this great Italian band. And naturally, we are focused on the great Italian culture of Louisiana, the things that make us so great great when people come to Louisiana and search out our cultures and cuisines, you can believe they're looking for Italian. And I want to thank all of you for being here with us because it's going to be a fabulous show. We have great guests in the kitchen, a fabulous group we're going to uh, introduce in just a second. And I'm cooking for you as well. Good food. Y'all ready for it, huh? Absolutely. Huh? Oppression, religious freedom, heavy taxes, and deplorable working conditions brought many immigrants to the New World. The Italians were no different. Disappointed and betrayed by their government, Sicilians migrated from the harbor of Palermo to the port of New Orleans. What a contribution they made to Louisiana's food empire. Joe Maselli introduces us to our Italian immigrants. <laughs> Following the Civil War, sugar cultivation in Louisiana slowed tremendously. But when the battlefields cleared, a more alarming problem arose. With the slaves now free men, plantation owners desperately needed a secure labor force. Ultimately, Italians were the attractive workforce. Italians had lived in New Orleans even before the Civil War and made up the largest Italian population in any U.S. city, even New York that we had Italians here as early as 1790s because Tanti came here, Enrico Tanti came here as the number two man in the La Salle expedition. It is claimed that he's the man with the iron hand. It just so happened that at this time, living conditions in Italy were intolerable. With the liberation of Sicily by Giuseppe Garibaldi, Sicilians hoped for better land distribution, relief from heavy taxes, and of course better working conditions. But it was just not to be. The Sicilians lived in misery. Immigration to America was their only relief. The main thing that caused a lot of this evacuation of Italians and Sicilians from Italy was that the king didn't keep his word. So in 1870, when it was officially united as one country from Sicily all the way up through Venice, Milan, and et cetera, et cetera, the people waiting for this little piece of land were waiting, they didn't get anything, so they said, the hell with it, we're gone. And they started leaving, and it was the greatest immigration of people from any country in history. In 1881, the Louisiana Sugar Planters Association approved a propaganda campaign to recruit Italian laborers. Information was distributed about wages and job certainty. A passenger steam route between New Orleans and Southern Italy began with a $40 fare per person. As they got off the boat here after a 30, 35 day trip, 
They had to decide, are they going to stay in New Orleans and work in New Orleans, or are they going to go work on a plantation? Well, some people who represent plantation owners were waiting on the docks for them and offering them 50 cents a day to work on a plantation, which is a sizable amount of money to them. Some of them decided to stay in the city. And in doing so, they become butchers, uh, grocery people, or whatever. Small business people. They hail from many towns, including Contessa, Corleone, and Chefalu, and of course, Palermo. From the late 19th century to World War I, more than one and a half million Sicilians left their homeland. They had very little. We looked at immigration records here, which are public information, and you had to declare how much money you had when you come in. If you had $10, there was a lot of money for most of them. So we know we began with nothing. Though they were poor and with few possessions, most were young, sturdy, and had an incredible work ethic. By 1904, 30,000 Italians lived in Louisiana. Their frugal nature allowed them to save money over the years, and soon these Italian immigrants were buying cheap farmland and moving to Tangibahoa Parish, where they became our strawberry farmers. Wow, what a, what a fabulous history. And to think, y'all, that all of this great Italian influence came about because they were promised things that they didn't get. And of course, after that reunification movement, uh, here, here are the Italians in Louisiana giving us so much of our great food, our great culture, our great music. And Joe, I don't think anybody could have said it better than you in that packet right there. Let me shake your hand, absolutely. <laughs> Y'all, uh, a couple of people needing introductions in the kitchen here. Of course, Joe Maselli, uh, not, not only one of the founders of the uh, Italian Museum in New Orleans, the Italian newspaper, the Italian Hall of Fame, the Italian, the Italian, the Italian. He is Mr. Italian right here. Uh, Dr. Philip Cancellari, an Italian who's also a veterinarian, and I'm not cooking any strange things here, so I've got to figure that out. Huh? <laughs> Welcome. Nice, nice to have you. And then Carla uh, D'Artes, who is a representative from Morgan City, Louisiana, and it's so nice to have you, you. Uh, here as well in the music. Do I have to tell y'all about Bobby, La, or not, not, uh, Loner, Bobby Loner. <laughs> and he promised to, he promised to do something for me today. Macaguzza, <laughs> Macaguzza Bella, you're my pizza pie with extra mozzarella. Mwah! Right there. Whew. Anyway, y'all, thanks so much. What a, what a great group uh, y'all are. And I'm talking about Italian food. Everything great in food in Louisiana has some Italian touch to it, no doubt about that. And uh, I'm taking a big chance today. I'm cooking spaghetti and meatballs for this group. Uh, can you imagine that? Hey, protect me, y'all. Protect me here. Uh, anyway, what are we going to start off uh, uh, with here? Well, first of all, the choices of pasta are absolutely incredible. I'm going to use the spaghetti here. But of course, there's angel hair. There's all the, now there's the rotini. There's the, the little shells. There's so many uh, choices of pasta today. And then, of course, the great cheeses, the pecorino romano, the, uh, oh, this, uh, this wonderful parmigiano reggiano, the great cheeses. I love to, to cook with that. Now, my meatballs. I got my meatballs from a very famous, my recipe from a very famous woman in Palermo who said, no Italian in Louisiana better ever question the recipe. <laughs> so yeah, so Joe, you just keep quiet over there. I always put, she said she put veal, pork, and beef in her recipes. That's something y'all do sometimes? Well, I, I, I cut out the veal because I couldn't find any, so I went, <laughs> no, I use beef and pork, half and half, about a pound each. Now, Joe, I put a lot of eggs in mine. I said, uh, you put eggs in yours, huh? Don't answer that. I put, five or, I put five or six of them in here, and then, of course, my onion, celery, bell pepper. I know people who actually make meatballs with just a little bit of uh, diced onions in it, just a little touch of diced onions, a little bit of uh, celery and garlic, and that's about it. Not too much more to bread, crumbs, and eggs, of course. Garlic, you want to joke, can I put garlic in? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> <A joke? laughs> <laughs> Joe, your, your, your brother gave me this recipe, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> uh, Joe, let's talk.
talk a little bit about the Italians because you have such a fantastic place uh, where you, where you, the, the Italian museum where we did that uh, opening. All of this happened just because Garibaldi didn't keep a promise, right? He didn't keep yeah, his promise. word. And then they came to Louisiana, and of course, just at the right time, the Civil War was over. There was a lot of labor uh, needed here, and they brought work ethic mainly, right? Work ethic, family, right? tradition. All of those great things, y'all, and of course, food. No doubt about that. So, Joe, I have my eggs, I have my meat in here, I have all of that stuff. Put a little Parmesan cheese. In it. Now, don't you steal my recipe and go tell people this is yours. Now, you know I'm what I mean. Write it down. Huh? <laughs> you don't want to write it down. <laughs> okay, a little Italian breadcrumbs. No, better still, I'll tape. Huh? <laughs> Joe, look, look, Joe, look what I learned. Oh, yeah. Ah, here we go, y'all, right here. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> <laughs> now you know I'm cooking Italian right, <laughs> right here. Oh, just absolutely, absolutely fantastic. And, uh, and you know, Philip, you and I were talking earlier about how the immigrants, uh, the Italian immigrants, uh, have been making choices between the plantations in New Orleans. Many of them migrated out of the city into towns all over the country, but certainly Louisiana. Certainly did. They went to Baton Rouge, Shreveport, Monroe, Alexandria, Opelousas, and uh, I think the driving force behind a lot of them, their families, the tradition, as Joe had said, they came here and they knew education was a big part of right. what was going on and uh, they wanted to see us all progress forward and I think um, I, I myself is just seeing the fruition of, of that hard work and labor that they used on the plantations and the little small businesses that started, they want to see right. their kids go ahead and, and, they, and, the, and the children get, were really children. the benefactor. Right, right, and it's two or three generations down the road that right. this is all coming, they saw it and uh, now it's becoming a, a part of the culture of Louisiana and across the nation. Y'all, a little bit salt and pepper in here. My favorite, my favorite Italian sauce, what is it? I'm not telling you because of Jill. Um, <laughs> your favorite marinara, don't buy anything in a can. Don't buy anything in a can, y'all. Just go ahead and take those good plum tomatoes, put them in there. I'm gonna drop the, the, the meatballs right on in it at this point. Let it cook for just a second. I want y'all to look at what it, I'm gonna wash my hands. Take a look at the spaghetti and meatballs right there. Joe, I'm gonna serve you a plate and then you can tell me whether you like them or not, huh? That'll be good. A little, uh, always a little uh, Parmesan cheese on, on top of it. You can just, oh, I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Y'all just, uh, hey look, just, just take a look at that and let your saliva glands go. <laughs> Y'all, many people think a sandwich is just a sandwich, but when it's a muffalata, well, it's not just a sandwich. One of the great food contributions of the Italians in New Orleans was the creation of this world-famous sandwich, the muffalata. Norma Jean Webb, an immigrant herself, teaches us how to make this fabulous sandwich. <laughs> Y'all, I, I tell you, we're in the right place today. We're in a den of great food here at Norjo's Imports in Metairie, Louisiana. And I have the, the two halves of the Norjo. I have Norma and I have Joe right here. And we're making what I hear is the best muffalata in all of New Orleans. Now, That's right. Now, what makes it the best? Because we do it with best quality product and we love to. Oh, and it's all, it's all, and it's all, it's all, it's all from the heart. That's now right. we have one, go, go ahead, we're going to make one. You're starting off, what's the bread that we're using here? Uh, this is a, it's a special, uh, Luciana Baker make a bread, special uh, for us. So, but, but is the bread an it's Italian a, loaf? It's Italian loaf, yes, now, So we start off with, a, now tell me the two cheeses going on. I, I, in our muffalata we use a uh, Swiss, Emmental Swiss. So, oh, the Swiss Emmental with the big holes the imported in it. one, that's correct. And, and then the and uh, provolone. And also we also the imported provolone. Right. We slice it, this is not two eight. this is like a model, uh, uh, Mild young, yeah, nice, nice, nice mild cheese. Yes. Now a lot of different meats go on it. So what? Yeah, what we meats use it. We use it, Daniela uh, mortadella with yeah. the pistachio. On oh. it. Also, so we, this right here is this the, one which you use right now. This is salami, uh, Genoa salami, hard Genoa salami. Now, now what? Now what about the salami with the little black peppercorns in there? Can you put that on sometimes? Sure, huh? the super sata. We have ah, a super sata. We can use. Yeah. It. You know, we have. But this is what the no. Uh, this is the mafalada 
that we made with the particular ah, okay. meat. And then the next one, oh, now this is this a very is, special meat. Yeah, I want everybody to see that. This mortadella. That's the mortadella. With the pistachio. Now, mortadella, tell us a little bit about that meat. Exactly what is that? Uh, the meat is in, I believe, is in the family of the uh, bologna, but it's a more ah. refined type of meat. So it's kind of like bologna, yeah. but it has the fat in it. And, 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 the, pro, and, the, and the pistachio. And the pistachio. They give a great taste. Very that. nice. Yes. Okay, so now we have the, those two. What, right. what, what else now do we, we have? Now we have over here that we use the, this, the ham. Ah, okay. We now. use it like a little small. So, so let, let's catch up. We have uh, the provolone, provolone, we have the Swiss Emmental, the, the, we, we, we have the, the, salami. Uh, the salami, we have the mortadella, the now we're going in with ham. Oh, the ham. <laughs> we have the ham. No wonder it's a good sandwich, well, huh? and we're not finished yet. Yes. Now I know every time I talk to chefs and I'm looking for specialty foods, mm -hmm. uh, uh, specialty imports, they say Nardjo's, that's the place. So now, <laughs> so, so hey, congratulations, well, y'all have done you, a good job. So much. now we're finishing up with more cheese, right? Yeah, okay, now then, so you gotta use it. We use Prosciutto, del prosciutto, ah, that's a special they call it Head Moon del Prosciutto from Daniela. This is made special for us that we use it for our And mother, so that's an, uh, that's an Italian. It's another Italian. That's, that's right. an prosciutto, Italian yeah. prosciutto, and that's a that's wonderful correct. fine yes, meat. Yes. So you, we have about four different meats, about two different cheeses. That's correct. That's high, and use. then we also and have. And also, we made the ala salad that, that we make it ourselves. Ah, this ala. is our own make, homemade. We made it from the, from the right. bottle. To the Oh, and product. So that's know? all. That's uh, that's all the chokes. That's uh, that's all kind of a. Uh, no, it's celery, carrots, celery, uh, calamata. Okay, and that's the dressing that We part. use extra virgin olive oil and things. Okay, like now that. this. Now we already have one in the in yes. the oven. So let's uh, we and can and get we, it out. We, and we sell a hot also. So oh. they may have request. Some people request hot. Some people they oh, have so a the choice. Hot or hot cold. Or cold. Okay. This one has to be. Hot. All right, right. They're making it now. You can see when you put the cheese oh, in the melt. You see it's how all melted. Look? It's wonderful. So oh. now that we do this, what we she gonna do is she gonna put the ala salad in there. Okay, good. Just gonna put you it know? on. They put it in there. Good. The ala salad. Right. Oh. And we put a lot of ala salad oh. like this. You see? Well, now, now, now you don't have to mortgage the house to buy a sandwich like this, huh? This well, is like, no. Woo, this is <laughs> Let me tell you something. Whatever you go in the side, you almost the value of the, the sandwich we sell. Oh, you know, it's this almost is the a cost. Well, y'all, we're gonna put it together and we need to get a little cut of it. I'm mm -hmm. going to eat it. I don't have the heart to allow you to even watch me put this sandwich in my mouth. It's too good. Be hey, I'm going to see y'all later. I'm eating my falafel. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Take a look at that. Mm. My falafel from Narjo. <laughs> oh, y'all. I'm... I'm unwrapping one of the greatest gifts you can get in Louisiana, a muffalata right here. And I'm going to give, whew, take a look at that right there. Uh, I'm going to give one to my buddy Joe, um, and you let me know what you think about that one. Let me give, well, I'm going to spread these out right here. Oh, the great muffalata sandwich. And y'all, there's a couple of great shops uh, in New Orleans. Of course, everybody knows about Central Grocery, Progresso, all of those wonderful shops that that uh, make the muffalata. Oh, look, I have a whole tray up here. Ted, on here. You hand those across. Just take take one and <laughs> just take one and send the rest back, Ted. I'll just go ahead and take them and send. And I'm watching you, okay? <laughs> so y'all, we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, and the muff the muffalata. You know, there's a lot of stories, Joe, about the origin of the muffalata sandwich, about the about the muffalata, about the bread itself, and wiping the bottom of the olive barrels to get the crushed olives, and then of course borrowing the meats from the market. Is that a true story? The way the muffalata actually was founded. Well, I think, like most foods, it's a poor man's food. Right. So you don't let anything go to waste. Right. And you have it described as good as anybody. Yeah, so the Italians working in the market would have had the barrels of olive oil with, uh, with the crushed olives in the bottom, then taking that nice muff loaf or that muffalata bread, that Italian bread with the sesame seeds, wiping the bottom of the barrel, and before too long, somebody across the aisle said, hey, give me one of those, I'll give you some pastrami, I'll give you some mortadella, I'll give you all of the meats, and of course the sandwich uh, was born. You see my pot smoking here, Joe? Uh, that's olive oil. Good olive oil. And there's a picture of the ship that actually brought those Italians that you were sitting in front of, right on the front of our olive oil. What am I cooking, y'all? Osobuco, the, the, the long bone. This is the veal shank 
the mag, one of the most greatest gifts of the Italian sauce. And what do we do? This is a long, slow cook right here. So I'm mixing together a little flour and garlic because we want to sprinkle them a little bit with that. But of course, I'm also going to season them really well with a little salt here, a little pepper, a little garlic. I'm putting a lot of garlic on these. And uh, then I'm going to put them down into this smoking pot here to brown them. And you want a good, long, slow brown on them because, again, you want that caramelization. And Joe, while these are browning nicely, the, uh, uh, the story is that Garibaldi's son or grandson married a Louisiana girl. Is that true? Grandson. Grandson. Now, how did they meet? Were they... They huh? met in New York. They met in New York. Uh, it was like the high society. Right. Uh, Madeline Baker was a, from Bugaloosa. She was a movie star and a stage star in New York. And, the, and Garibaldi's grandson was a general uh -huh. who was anti-Mussolini. And so he lived in New York. And so, so here's Garibaldi, the, the great dictator of Sicily and the re, re, reuniter of the whole 1926. country. 1926. Yeah. 1926, married a Louisiana girl. That's how some of the good cooking got back to Italy, right, Joe? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, and, and, and you know, also, there's, uh, there's such great stories. The newspaper accounts of the early Italians arriving in Louisiana. Every day the newspapers were down there as the ships came in because they were really marketing hard in Italy to get the Italian immigrants to come over. So there's a lot of great accounts of, uh, of the arrival of the Italians here, right? Well, one of your best historians was a woman from Baton Rouge. Yeah. Uh, Zena, what was her name? Zena, Zena Venezuela. That's close, close enough, enough. Joe. <laughs> huh? <laughs> But anyway, so she, uh, she was one of the newspaper writers who uh, well, accounted... She, no, she just did that. Her and, uh, and the fellow that was the Secretary of State were good friends. Uh, right. From, from your friend. Paul, Paul, Paul Hardy. Oh, Paul Hardy, yeah, Paul sure. Hardy. Anyway, y'all, so the account of the Italians are just absolutely fantastic, beginning upon their arrival in Louisiana. So really, really great history. And Joe, you've done a good job with the, uh, with the American Italian Museum in New Orleans, which I want to talk about in a minute. But y'all look, I have my Osso Buco nice and brown here. It's really wonderful. Now what do I do? Again, on top of that, onions. You notice the onions, the celery. You notice the uh, Trinity continues to go into the pot, the bell peppers, really nice on top of the Osso Buco. Garlic again. Garlic was, uh, how important was garlic in Italian cooking? Do I really, do I, do I need to ask that? Huh? Is that important? No, okay. All right, there you go. There you go. <laughs> all right, y'all. So uh, anyway, so this is going all into it right here. Now I'm going to, look, look at this pot. Uh, Keith, you have to get in this pot. You have to show them this. Look at the, all of those wonderful flavors here. Now the, uh, uh, the tomatoes. I'm going to put tomatoes, the Italian plums, right on top of that. The pearl onions. You notice how the Italians just keep adding on? They just keep adding all of these wonderful things. Some mushrooms could go in to it as well, just like that. And of course, another little touch. I'm going to put another little touch of, uh, because of all the seasonings of salt and pepper. Now this is actually going to cook y'all with the stock. I'm putting a little beef stock in here. I'm going to bring it to a rolling boil. It's going to take about two hours to tell. Oh, I tell you, this is an Italian pot. We cooking here. Uh, this is an Italian kitchen. We throwing stuff around out here, y'all. Uh, anyway, we're going to bring it to the bar, put a lid on top of it, and just let it oh, simmer for two hours. And look what it looks like when it's done. Oh, take a look at this right here. Joe, do you love it? Oh, a little basil on top of it. Really wonderful. I'm going to let you uh, take a, a, a taste of that as well. Tell me a little bit about the Italian American Museum quickly. Well, it's a... It's a place where we store records. Right. Because, as you know, unfortunately, people from time to time don't always gain from a hurricane. But we've gained from that because had it been for the museum having all these records in the library and all, a lot of the things would go to waste. So you have the museum set up there, and it's open to the public, so people right. can come in and trace Italian records. Right. Y'all, it's a fabulous place to be. Y'all, we have some 
uh, eggplant right here that's all covered with the uh, Parmesan cheese. We have our kakutsa, talking about kakutsa. I'm going to, I want y'all to play that song for me. Y'all ready? I'm going to sign off and I want y'all to bring us right on up with that song, y'all, because when, when you're sitting in the kitchen, time flies when you're enjoying great food and good conversation with friends. Thanks for stopping by, y'all, as we continue to explore the unique food heritage of Louisiana and cook up another great taste of this state. I want to hear kakutsa, y'all. <laughs> Na kukutsa, me mozzarella Na te patta pi, me mozzarella Me con de patta pazzo de bide No te matta di te kutsarelle Na kukutsa, no vuole la nota Everybody know it's good to be When you fight your patta pi to purchase the Encyclopedia of Cajun and Creole Cuisine by Chef John Foles, featuring more than 750 traditional recipes, a CD-ROM of the book, or a copy of the program featuring all three episodes of Today's Culture, call the number on your screen. Major underwriting for A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles was provided by the Baton Rouge Convention and Visitors Bureau. In Baton Rouge, our past is your present. Baton Rouge, authentic Louisiana at every turn. And People's Drug Stores, serving South Louisiana for generations. George and Shirley Piku are proud supporters of A Taste of Louisiana with Chef John Foles by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Where you have this architecture, history, music, and the bittersweet cry of the blues. Especially the blues. There you go. How about a dozen? Red beans and rice. We rolling, y'all.